Well, good morning, everyone, and uh, welcome to Church Outside. How awesome is this? Man, what a beautiful day. Uh, temperature's great. Uh, we're sitting in the shade, and it's a good day to worship today. If you're joining us online, we're so glad to have you here with us this morning as well. We're so excited about the opportunity to worship today. Let's pray together as uh, Matt leads us in order of prayer. Lord, Lord, you are our Father in heaven, and we love you. And Lord, we need in times like this a reminder that you are our Father and you're in charge, and, and it's only in you during these times when it seems so dreary and so, so mixed up, even so evil sometimes, Lord, that there is a hope we have. And Lord, I need your Holy Spirit this morning because I'm as guilty as anyone, Lord, of of not recognizing that, that you are a living God and we have a hope in that. That no matter what's going on in our lives, no matter what's going on in this city, no matter what's going on in this country, Lord, that we have a hope in you. And you're honestly our only hope. And to know that you're unchanging and you're always there should you put a smile on our face with that hope this morning, Lord. So Lord, stay with us now as we, as we sing to you, Lord and bring you honor and bring you praise. It's in your name we pray. Feel free to stand if you'd like to sing. How great the chasm that laid between us How high the mountain I could not climb In desperation I turned to heaven And spoke your name Into the night Then through the darkness Your loving kindness Tore through the shadows Of my soul the work is finished, the end is written, Jesus Christ, my living hope. Who could imagine so great a mercy, what heart could fathom such boundless grace? The God of ages stepped down from glory to wear my sin and bear my shame. The cross has spoken, I am forgiven. The King of kings calls me his own. Beautiful Savior, I'm yours forever, Jesus Christ, my living hope. Claim on me, 
Then came the morning that sealed the promise. Your buried body began to breathe out of the silence. The Roman lion declared the grave has no claim on.
longer a slave to fear. I am a child of God. I'm no longer a slave to fear. I am a child of God. Well, let's pray together this morning. Most Holy God, we just want to thank you this morning uh, for what that song just means that we sung. Sometimes in life, we just, we just let it, it just all piles up and we let it get to us. And we, we look for relief and we look for release and we're not sure where to go. And then... And then we pray, and then we come to you. And something amazing and something powerful happens as we just remember that we're your child and what that means. It means everything. It means that you're with us. It means that you love us. It means, God, that you, the one who, you're above all things, you created all things, you're all powerful, that you're in control means that you can give us peace. It means that you can give us hope. And God, we need that today. So Lord, I just pray that, that Lord, this morning as we worship you, God, that you would just be pleased. And we thank you. We thank you for being our God. We just love you. We thank you for the opportunity we have to worship you in so many ways. This morning is yours, God. In your son's name we pray. cross I cannot comprehend the agonies of Calvary you the perfect holy one crossed your son and drank the bitter cup reserved for me your blood your blood Washed away my sin, Jesus, thank you. The Father's wrath completely satisfied, Jesus, thank you. Once you're in me, now seated at your table, Jesus, thank you. By a perfect sacrifice. By a perfect sacrifice, I've been brought near. Your enemy now made your friend. Pouring out the riches of your glorious grace. Your mercy and your kindness know no end. Blood has washed away my sin. Jesus, thank you. The Father's wrath completely satisfied. Jesus, thank you. Once you're in me, now seated at your table. Jesus, thank you. Oh, Jesus, thank you.
God's wrath completely satisfied. Jesus, thank you, your blood has washed away my sin. Jesus, thank you, the Father's wrath completely satisfied. Jesus, thank you, once your enemy, now seated at your table. Jesus, thank you. Once your enemy, once your enemy, now seated at your table, Jesus, thank you. Jesus, thank you.
Well, good morning. Isn't this great? How awesome is that? I was standing up, sitting over here uh, singing, and uh, this breeze came through. It was just awesome. And I saw my notes going flop, flop, flop. <laughs> but man, I'll take this any day. This is, this is fantastic. There's just something exciting about being together. I've missed it, and I enjoy looking out and seeing you way out there. You know, you're allowed under the shelter. You can be out there. That's okay, but you're allowed under the shelter, too. And, uh, but wherever you want to be, we're just glad you're here. We're beginning a new series this morning, and uh, I'm really excited about it. It's, it's something that's been on my mind a lot during this, this, this time, this season of life that we're going through right now. It's just things have been so crazy. We're living in unprecedented times. Um, this COVID-19 is just really getting to everybody. You know, it, it's something that it just seems like it's adversely affect all of our lives. It's affected the way we do business. In fact, businesses who have not rapidly adapted to what's going on are closing their doors right now. We're looking at schools and sports and wondering what's going to go on with, with everything that's happening, entertainment. And we have several people from our church who have families who are in nursing homes or in hospitals, and, and they can't go see their families, and that's difficult. I know yesterday... We went and saw my mom, and appreciate all your prayers for my mom. She's actually going home to my sisters today, uh, so we're, we're thankful for that. But yesterday, Sue and I are looking through a window, standing outside, you know, just so she could see somebody's face, you know. And it's kind of crazy to see all the things that are going on, and people are afraid. They're afraid to come to, to church. We're social distanced, and we're meeting outside, and, and that's why we're outside. If we're inside, we're going to be social distance and disinfecting and, and multiple services, but... It's just changed everything that we're doing and, and how we're doing things. But the one thing I want to make sure that we still understand as a church is that people still need Jesus, right? People still need Jesus. We live in a world that's changing so rapidly, it just kind of makes my head spin. It's, it's instinctively we know inside that something's missing. We can feel it. We, we know that it's there. Uh, and we need to remember more than ever, people need Jesus, Somehow we need to do what Jesus has told us to do and get the message of the gospel out to our community and our world. You know, I, I realize that this is an inconvenience, and I realize that, that this is difficult, and I realize that all this has presented some challenges. But let me tell you something. People have the same needs today, if not more today, than they, than they did three, four months ago. People need Jesus today. He's a source of love. He's our source of peace. He's our source of hope. He's our source of, of eternal life. He's our source of, of forgiveness and of grace and of mercy. He's everything that we need in our lives. And I feel like as, as a church, and we've kind of had to kind of step back and just kind of wait and kind of take this idea. We're going to wait and see what happens with all of this. And honestly, I'm just done waiting. We were told to share the gospel. We were told... That, 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 that people need to hear this message. What is the gospel that we're talking about? It's that Jesus is God, and Jesus became man. Our sins separate us from God, and Jesus alone can save us. He took our place on the cross and proved who he was with the resurrection, and the only way we can even approach God is by faith through Christ. This truth changes everything. And we live in a world that needs the opportunity to hear this. Jesus gave us one mission. He said, I want you to go into the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He said, I want everybody to have an opportunity to, to hear what we just talked about, that you were loved and that Jesus took, took our place in a cross and we can have an amazing relationship with God. I've been, I've been reading Colossians chapter 1. And it, uh, just, I just, I've been reading it over and over again. I've been listening to it on the way to work. It's just a short, short book of the Bible, but it's really got my attention. And there, there are a couple of verses I just want to read this morning as we're starting off that I'd like for us to think about. Colossians chapter 1 and verse 3 says this. It says, We give thanks to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ because of the hope which is laid up for you in heaven, of which you heard before in the word of the truth of the gospel, which has come to you as it has also in all the world and it's bringing fruit as it is also among you since the day you heard and knew the grace of God and truth. I want you to look at that, what that's saying there. 
The truth of the gospel is bringing fruit, right? Something happens when, when we get this message out to people. It seems kind of crazy. And in fact, Paul said, you know, we preach Christ crucified. To some, this seems kind of foolish. He said, but all I know is that whenever I do this, it changes lives. And people need that today. The truth of the gospel brings fruit in all the world. How is that? How does that happen? Well, Ephesians 3, 9, we know this. It says, for by grace we're saved through faith. Right? So we're saved by grace through faith. But where do we get this faith? Think about it. Romans 10, 17 says that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So what happens is, is when the church in a time like this stays in the church... And with the church in a time like this, we just kind of isolate ourselves from each other and from the world. We're not putting out a word of God that instills faith in people that changes lives. And we're going to have to figure that out. Colossians chapter 1 tells us this as you go on down in the chapter. It says, so we tell others about Christ, warning everyone and teaching everyone with all the wisdom God has given us. Now, I want you to look at that. How are we telling people about Christ? We're telling them with all the wisdom that God has given us. How else are we doing this? He says, we want to present them to God perfect in their relationship to Christ. I want them to experience what we get to experience. I want them to understand what the love of God is in their life and how life-changing that is. And so he goes on and says, that's why I work and struggle so hard, depending on Christ's mighty power that works within me. So let's break this down. What's he saying? He's saying, I want you to tell people about Jesus. I want you to give them your very best. He says, with all the wisdom God has given us, I want you to put everything, every gift, every talent, every ability, all the knowledge, anything that God's given I want you to take that, and I want you to use that to somehow get this message out. And then he says, it's not just that. He says, I want you to serve hard. I want you to serve hard. He says, that's why I work and I struggle so hard. And then he says, from there, you just depend on Jesus. Right? It's his power. Our job is to tell people. Our job is to give them our best. Our job is to serve hard, and then we sit back and we let God do what only God can do. I love that. I love that. With all the wisdom that God has given us. God, God deserves our best. He gave us His best when He gave us Jesus. And the crazy thing about it is we, we have to kind of approach this like a missionaries do whenever they go to another culture. We're living in a different culture now than we were four or five months ago. This, this has changed everything. So how do we do? What do we do? Do we stay inside? Do we just not, not get the message out? How do we get this message out? Do we just wait until it's over? I mean, I, I'm reading this week. There are some people are saying this may never be over. So what, does the church just stay inside? Do we just hang it up until Christ comes back? We just say, oh, we're just done? I'm not satisfied with that. And neither are you, I'm sure. We're going to use all of the wisdom that God has given us. And we're going to understand that maybe we can't do what we used to do. But we're going to find another way. We're going to work hard. We're going to serve hard. And get this message out. Because it's amazing. You know, it's amazing to understand how much Jesus loves us. The mission that you're on, it deserves your best. It deserves your best. What are we going to do? We're not comfortable with just putting church on hold. Now, you know, we're going to find creative ways to get this message out. Maybe it's sitting outside, distance in lawn chairs, in the shade. Where's the power? Over here. Power's over here in the sun, you know. <laughs> maybe, it's, maybe, it's, uh, maybe it's social distance inside. Maybe it's live streaming and so, so that you can watch us online. And, and we're glad that you're here. We want to provide that level of comfort for you as well. But maybe there's something else we can do too. And we need to figure that out. People still need Jesus, right? So how are we going to tell people about God's love? How are we going to do that? We're faced with this unique challenge 
to fulfill the mission that Jesus gave us to go into all the world and tell everyone about Jesus and his love for us and our need for the cross, we've been commanded to share this love with everyone, and our traditional method has been affected by all of this. When I talk about telling people about Jesus, can we be honest for a minute? What happens whenever I say those words? You kind of cringe, don't you? <laughs> I'll be honest, I do too. You know, it's, it's uncomfortable, the thought of, of telling people about Jesus. It's, it's, it's something that's it's kind of a struggle. I know that whenever I started the church here, um, I told you a story about it. I went out, I had a map of the city, and I went out and knocked on every door. Every door I took a highlighter, when I hit a street, I'd go out and knock on every door. A lot of people weren't home. I had some really interesting conversations. I had some uh, crazy experiences. I went up to one house over in the meadows, and uh, you, you walk past, they had an awning over their whole front of their house, and then their picture window, you had to walk past their picture window, past the driveway, and then, and then the front door was here. And that guy stood behind the curtain. He saw me coming, and he waited. And he waited until I got right for the picture when he said, what do you want? <laughs> you know, I about jumped out of my skin. He thought that was the funniest thing in the world. He, he, he had this, he just wanted to have some fun. And he did not believe in God. He wanted to have a lot of conversations about it. We did, but man, I got to tell you, I about came out of my skin whenever he yelled going out. It's uncomfortable. Let's be honest, somebody knocks on my door, I don't want to go to the door. <laughs> in fact, I usually don't sometimes. Uh, it's sad to say. I always wonder. I, I'm skeptical. I wonder, are people selling something? What do they want? You know, I, you know I, I don't know these people. What's going on? Why should I listen to you? Uh, and it's terrifying. And the idea of just going up and just talking to somebody, maybe that you don't even know, for a lot of people, that's terrifying. You know, if, if you look at studies, one of people's number one concerns is is, is is speak, talking to people they don't know. It's, it's interacting with people, with strangers, and it's, it's something that's a struggle for most people. So what do we do? I mean, most of us are comfortable going out and preaching on street corners. Some are, if you are, fantastic. And some people, most people aren't comfortable going out and just talking to people you don't know on the street. In, in our society, in our culture, at least in our community, that's not been incredibly effective. I can tell you that knocking on every door... I can't really tell you, it, I'm, I'm sure there was some fruit from that, but it was not what you would think for the time that I put into it. So, you know, but on college campuses maybe, that, that might be something that where people will talk, be more interested. It's, you kind of have to gauge the culture that you're in. But the reality is, is that we struggle. But we have this mission. We struggle, but we have this mission. What are we supposed to do with that? And we're going to go through this series and by the end of this series, we're, we're our, my goal is that we're going to be in a position to do something that is fun, do something that's exciting, do something that's not threatening, and do something that can change people's lives. Something that everybody can do, that you and I can both do, and you can absolutely enjoy. It's amazing to think about. Right or wrong, our method for doing church, unfortunately, has too often been to to have our church service and our method for telling people about Jesus has been to invite them to church. And that's a great thing and, and, and we should still continue to do that. But we're in a different world now, right? We're, we're, we're in a different time. It's harder to do that. We're going to have to rethink our model for evangelism. Some people are uncomfortable and, and, and I respect that. And so we invite them to live stream like, like those who are joining us this morning. But if you've been around our church for the past year and a half, you've noticed some things are a little different. We're, we're, we're changing the culture of our church from, from a come and sit church to a go and do church. And, and as we do this, as you, as you look in the book of the Bible, there's a book of the Bible that talks about the church getting started. And if you think about how daunting that task was, there was no church, and then the church starts. How does the church spread and become what it is today. It all started in the book of Acts. As you read that story about what happened, you don't even really have to even start the story. You can look at the title of the book to understand what the church was doing to make a difference in the world. What's it called? It's called the book of what? I didn't hear that. Well, what's it called? It's called the book of what? It's the book of Acts, right? And we, we, we read that, we don't even think about what it means anymore, but what it means is that the church was doing something. Right? The church was out 
in their community doing something. The New Testament was a church of action, not waiting. We're not going to wait for this to be done, to just continue. We're not going to put everything on hold. The needs are greater than I think they've ever been. We've forgotten what it means sometimes to go out and act. You know, Jesus said that the world would know that we are his followers by the quality of our church services. Amen? Is that what he said? Did he say, the church will know that we are his, his, his disciples by how awesome our church services are? No, that's not what he said, right? I think he said in John chapter 13, he said, by this all will know you're my disciples. If what? If you have love for one another. I believe that when people see God's love in action, it touches something deep down inside of them. And that they can feel the presence and the power of the Lord through humble acts of service. Our series is called Conspiracy of Kindness. It's based on a book by Steve Shogren. And the idea is, is, is how do we reach out to our world in a way that they will listen and make a difference. And Jesus showed us. He didn't come as a king. He didn't come as, as the almighty power ruler of the universe, although he was. How did he come? He came to serve. He came and he washed people's feet. He came and, and he did. He spent time with people that nobody else would spend time with. We're, we're going to create this culture of servant evangelism. And what is that whenever I say that? Servant evangelism is deeds of love plus words of love plus adequate time. You see, most churches have become way too satisfied with having a church service and hoping that the people who need to hear about Jesus will just show up. But they're not always going to do that. It was, it was so interesting. In our community, it's, 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 a num it's, a, it's amazing the interest that people have in Christ. A, a people who don't go to church. Ye yesterday, Jack and I were at a new, uh, new place that were giving out food. And this guy named Steve was talking to me. And Steve gave me his number. He wanted me to write his number down. He said, if you need help with anything... I'll help you. He said, I'm a recovering, I'm a recovering addict. He said, but, uh, you know, he, he wanted to be a part of, of, of what Jesus was doing. That's pretty cool, isn't it? Steve couldn't walk into our service today because he doesn't have transportation. We're going to have to try to figure out a way to get him here. But we can go to Steve. It's kind of an interesting thing. You see as we begin this new series that centers around one word that's powerful and it's, it's often not understood, the word is kindness. It's something that we all know. It's not anything new, right? But when we practice it, it's life-changing. We're going to talk about servant evangelism. Deeds of love plus the words of love given adequate time for God to work in their lives it, it changes people. Right? So people still need Jesus. And we have to think about how are we going to get this message out of his love. And we're going to talk about the power of kindness. You know, when, when we first started the church, um, I, I, I had this, you know, I, I, last week I shared about some of the jobs that I had. And uh, I didn't make much money. Uh, our, our, I'm not complaining. God met every one of our needs, but, but we didn't have a whole lot. And we had not been in our house very long, and the water heater went out. And we had, you know, we were meeting at the high school, and the water heater went out. And I'm looking at our bank account. I don't have any money. <laughs> we didn't have any money to uh, fix our hot water heater. I honestly didn't know what I could do, what I, could, what I should do. Um, you know, as, as, as the dad and as the husband, I felt it was my job to, to, to take care of my family. And it's kind of a sickening feeling. You know, it's not the end of the world to take cold showers, but 
it is something that we've grown kind of accustomed to. Uh, and hot water is. So a guy at the church found out about it. Um, his name was Randy. And Randy said, you buy the hot water heater, I'll, uh, I'll put it in for you. So Randy came to my house. He picked me up in his pickup truck, which is awesome. <laughs> we drove to Lowe's. We bought a hot water, uh, a water heater. Um, we brought it back to our house. Um, he, we took the old one out. He installed the new one, and we we were fixed. He hold, hauled the old, old one off. You know, he said, "I'll help you do this." Well, that meant he would do everything, and I would stand around and watch and help him carry things. You know. You know, I, I don't think that Randy realized at that moment what that meant to our family. You know, the power of, of kindness. You know, you, we're starting a church. We left, a, you know, a, a, a job. I was full-time at another church. And, um, you know, and, and you, you have things that are working and things are secure and then you're out here. And there were times where, you know, there was, it was a little discouraging. And then you have something like this happen, and it's something amazing. It's an act of kindness, and it, it changes things. Why don't you stop for a minute? I want to think about people in your lives who have displayed kindness to you. Maybe it's the reason you're sitting here this morning. It, there's power there. And, and what Jesus did when he walked on this, this earth is he, he showed a lot of kindness. He talked to people that most people wouldn't talk to. He loved people that, that most people avoided. He had compassion on people who were hurting. He, he stopped what he was doing and he talked to them. People that everybody else walked by every day. There's a blind man that everybody walked by every day. And Jesus stops and he talks to them. He spent time with them. He, he fed them. And those acts of kindness, they, they got people's attention. Acts of kindness will get people's attention. Why are you talking to me? I'm a Samaritan woman. Why are you coming over to my house? I'm, I'm a tax collector who's cheated most of the people who are standing here in this crowd. Why aren't you condemning me like everybody else? I was caught in the very act of immorality. Why are you feeding us? I heard the disciples say, just send them off to fend for themselves. Why are you playing with my kids? Why are you eating with us? Nobody important ever eats with us. Jesus preached, Jesus confronted, but Jesus also used acts of kindness to open doors to people's lives. Romans chapter 2 and verse 4 says this. It says that God's kindness leads you toward repentance. In, in the message, it puts it this way. It says, the kindness of God leads to radical life change. And I believe that because we've seen that. And many of you have seen that as well. God showed us what to do. He gave us the formula. He told us to love people, right? We're going to read this passage, a few passages of Scripture that are familiar to us. But just, just listen. Listen to the words that are being said. In Jeremiah 31, it says, The Lord has appeared to have old to me, saying, Yes, I have loved you with an everlasting love. Therefore, with loving kindness, I've drawn you. This is what it looks like. And then in Matthew 25, he says, The king will say to those on his right hand, Come, you blessed of my father, and inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you took me in. I was naked, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you visited me. I was in prison, and you came to me. It sounds like a pretty good list of things that we could probably be focusing on as a church, right? It sounds like a pretty good list of things that we could focus on as a church that don't require us being confined in a building where we, it's difficult to social distance. It's people loving people. And, and it goes on in this, this story, Jesus said, and he says, the righteous will answer him saying, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you or, or thirsty and give you a drink? When did we see you a stranger and take you in? 
or who naked and clothe you? When did we see you sick or in prison and come to you? And the king will answer, say to them, As surely I say to you, as much as you did it to one of the least, he's my brethren, he did it to me. There's power in kindness. Now I bet most of you are thinking about kindness outside of your home. But you know, it should start in our homes, right? Kindness to each other. And then it moves out from there. So, people still need Jesus. But how are we going to get this message out that's so important? We're going to use the power of kindness. We have to recognize that kindness is from God. Galatians 5.22 says this. It says, the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness. That's pretty cool, isn't it? It means that I will know that God's Spirit is moving and working in me as I begin to experience kindness and give kindness to those around me. It won't even be something that I have to think about. It's a fruit of the Spirit. Kindness is something that comes from God through a person touching our lives. We can never forget that type of encounter. Let me say that again. Kindness is something that comes from God. Through a person touching our lives, and we don't ever forget that type of encounter. Titus 3, 4 says this. It says, When the kindness and the love of our God, our Savior, toward man appeared, it wasn't by our works that we have done, but as according to His mercy, He saved us. The kindness of God through Jesus in our lives allows us to experience salvation. Kindness is kind of a hard thing for some people to grasp, right? It's kind of crazy. In our society, people get real skeptical when you start being kind to them. (laughs) Isn't that crazy? But it's kind of true. We've kind of seen that in some of our ministries that we're doing right now. Uh, You don't get something for nothing. It's just kind of drilled into us. You know, whenever uh, uh, I I work for a company, and and the company that I work for, they have uh, an outside company that that is constantly drilling us on cybersecurity and on being careful with stuff. They'll send us emails to try to trick us into clicking on things that we shouldn't click on, and they'll say, we got you. Now you have to go do some training, you know. And one of the things that they kind of emphasize is, is you don't get something for nothing. Bill Gates is not giving you his money. Right? Uh, you know, if you read something and it's something that's free, nine times out of ten, the majority of times, it is not something, if it's too good to be true, let me just say this, it probably is. And so it's interesting, as we go out sometimes, and we do like, some of the things we do like even on Saturdays, uh, people like, we started up at Haven West, and uh, people would drive by, and they would see all this food out, they see people getting it, and they wouldn't stop. And so uh, Jack became the expert of being the, the tra- traffic control guy, and he would stand in front of their car. <laughs> they'd drive down the road, he'd go out, he'd flag them down, hey, roll your window down, and they'd roll it down about that far, right? Who is this crazy guy? I would have done the same thing if I saw Jack. You know, he's a scary guy. He'd roll my window down about that far. And they're looking at you like, what does this guy want? What's he selling? I don't want to buy anything. What's this all about? And Jack will look at him and say, Hey, you want some free food? And they still, they're like, No, really, it's free. They're like, you know. He said, just pull over here and open your car door and get out and look. Take whatever you want. And they're real hesitant. And they'll kind of pull over to the side. They're kind of looking around like somebody's got something. There's something going on here. I can't figure out what it is. And they'll get out real tentatively. And they'll come up and they'll look. And then people will help them, many of you. And and you'll just give them things. You need some produce. Do you want some bread? How about this? This this came from Panera yesterday or from Kroger or for whatever. Take and, and they put like one or two things. And say, no, that's not enough. Take more. And you fill their bags. And you fill their bags. And you fill their bags. And get in their car. And you carry it to their car. And they get in their car. And they're just kind of looking around like, 
Okay, here it is. This is where it's coming. And then you say, God bless you. God loves you and so do we. Have a great day. And they look so confused. And they drive off. And then they come back. And then they come back again. And then you build a relationship. And then you start talking to them. And then they come back with something on their mind. And you say, hey, it looks like you got something on your mind today. And then they begin to share. And then you begin to pray. And then God begins to do things. Kindness is powerful. Acts of kindness are a way that we can show what grace and love is. Salvation is offered to us a free cost to us. It costs Jesus a lot. We can use servant evangelism just to show people that, hey, look, we're, we're just, we're just going to love you in Jesus' name. No strings attached. We have people that try to give us money. And I'll tell them, no, we don't, we don't want your money. No, really, they try to give us money. They feel like they have to give us something. No, that's, you're missing it. Every now and then, uh, somebody, they'll just insist. I'll say, fine, I'll give it to somebody who needs it. You know? And we, sure enough, later that day, somebody come along with the need, and you give them the money. You know? Psalm 117 says that God's mercy and kindness is great toward us. And the truth of the Lord endures forever. Praise the Lord. Psalm 63.3 says, Because your loving kindness is better than life, my lips shall praise you. What does it take to break through to a person? Well, that's between that person and God. That's God's assignment, not ours. Ours is just to love them in Jesus' name. And we can all do that. There's nothing hard about that. It's not like, you know, it's not like you're selling anything. You're, not, you're, you're just loving and you're serving and you're being kind. My goal is at the end of this series, we're going to have an opportunity to put this into practice. We're going to have people sitting over here on our fields, the Lord willing, with upward soccer going on, and we've got close to between 90 and 100. We've got 102 kids signed up right now, and they're still joining, right? And their parents are going to be here. And I, what my goal is for this season of Upward is to say, okay, how can we love them even more than we loved them last year? What can we do? What can we do so they walk onto this place and they see there's just something different here? Be thinking about it. Be creative. It's exciting. You see, there's power in kindness. And we can all do that. And let's pray and look for ways that, that we can do that non-traditional ways to reach people for Christ. Now it's not just doing nice things and so, so somebody walks away and says, hey, that's a nice guy or a nice girl. It's doing things and saying, this is just, this is just our way of showing you God's love in a practical way. Easy and fun and exciting. I'd like to take just a moment. I'd like for you to pray. And I'd like for you to just uh, ask God to remind you about the people who touched you along your way in your life. Stop right now. Just kind of close your eyes. I want you to think about that just for a minute. Think about the people who just happened along in the way of each of your lives. Ask God to show you what brought you where you are. People have been investing in your life. It's our opportunity to recall that power and what it did for us and to realize that we can do the same for others. You see, we're not being kind to be accepted by God. We're being kind because we've been accepted by God. And if God can love me so much, how can I not love you? How can I not love others? What's our mission as a church? It's on the screen if you haven't seen it. It's to know Jesus and to make Him known while living, loving, and serving like Christ. It would be on the screen if I remembered to put the slide in. 
<laughs> well, I think we all know it right now, right? What's our mission? This is to come sit in that building and, and tell people about Christ just in that building? No. It's to know Jesus, to make him known, using all of our wisdom, working hard, serving hard, and then depending on Jesus. And we're going to figure that out. I'd like to invite you to just bow your heads and close your eyes. This morning, you may be in need of some kindness. You, you may be at a place to where you just you feel abused, you feel like taken advantage of, you feel like everything that's going on, it just, you just can't really take much more. I just want to tell you again, God loves you. More than you know. And so do we. Accept the kindness that God offers in His Son. Let Him be your Lord and your Savior. Let Him be, be real in your life and watch a difference that it makes. And then take that love and spread it around. It's an exciting thing to see what happens when we begin to care people begin to notice. God begins to show up. Maybe there's somebody that you're thinking about right now who you know could just use some words of encouragement or just a, a, an act of kindness. There's a, a, a gentleman at the church I used to go to. He's, his health is pretty bad right now, but he used to show up, he was retired, he used to show up at the widow's houses with his lawnmower and just mow their lawns. There's some, you know, there's no limit to how we can do this. That's what makes it fun. I want you to pray that God would use you, give you opportunities, and show you ways that you can be kind and then watch and see what happens. As you say, God loves me and you know, God loves you and so do I. And just watch and see how sometimes God will take those simple acts and words and turn them into just simple conversations that point people to Jesus. Would you pray for our church? that we don't just settle for just sitting around and waiting for this to all be done. I'm not going to do it. Let's ask God to give us wisdom to reach our world using whatever means it takes because it's worth it. Let's pray. Most holy God, we love you this morning and ask you to just challenge us, Lord. We're all, we're all a little bit terrified at the thought of you know, approaching a stranger and we shouldn't be, but we are. It's hard. We have these fears that we live with. All of us do. Most of us do. God, we can, we can, we can be creative. We can, we can just love people in your name and build relationships and then it's not scary anymore because we know each other. I just pray, God, that you'd help us to realize how many people around us are just looking for a simple act of kindness and the difference that it makes in their lives and pointing them to you. Let us live with an awareness of that. to realize it's not enough for just us to have you in our lives that there are people around us who need that too so we're going to use all of our wisdom God we're going to work hard we're going to serve hard we're gonna, and then we're going to just depend on you and then whatever you do God that's, that's you but that's going to be our prayer we love you in Jesus' name. Amen. You know, 
last week uh, I was at the restaurant with some people and um, this waitress came up and it's somebody who's waited on us before and she just was distracted there was something going on But when we were getting ready to pay the bill, someone said, hey, add $20 onto that tip. It's simple, right? It's an act of kindness. And it opens doors. There's so many things we can do. Pay for the person's meal behind you at the drive-thru. Mow your neighbor's grass. Wow. <laughs> Give the neighborhood kids a popsicle. Let's look for ways to love in his name. I can invite you to stand. This morning, if you've never accepted Christ as your Savior, it's so much fun. It changes everything. I'm going to invite you to do that this morning, to give your life to Christ and experience his kindness in your life. We have uh, several people who are wanting to get baptized. What is baptism? Baptism means it's, first of all, we get baptized because Jesus said, get baptized. <laughs> he, said, he said, go into the world, teach them, baptize them in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. It's our first act of obedience that we do once we've given our lives to Christ. It's a way to publicly say, uh, I'm identifying with you, Jesus. If that's something you'd like to do, see me. We're excited about having a baptismal service coming up and several people doing that. It's powerful. I don't know what your needs are this morning, but I know that you brought them here or you have them where you are there at home. We ask that you give them to Jesus today. It's a song place. It's time for you to do whatever God lays on your heart. It's a song place. about this week what we can do to just show and experience the power of kindness in Jesus name I, I want to hear your stories I love stories and I know you're going to have some tell me some of the things that are going on and some of the things that you've done and some of the reactions that you've had it's so much fun. This morning, I, I'd like to also just uh, 
close out with a word of prayer, then we're going to have a song. I know there's a lot of needs. i just like to pray for those needs this morning. Uh, Dan had asked me about a specific need this morning. I'm going to pray for that as well. Let's, let's pray together. Let's holy God, we love you, and we thank you for your amazing grace. It's, it's more than we can understand. There are needs that are that are beyond our ability to meet. But it's not our job to meet them. It's your job. It's our job to love them. It's our job to point them to you. It's our job to give you our best. It's our job to love them the hardest and to serve hard. And from there, it's it's your job. And we acknowledge that. Let us not try to do your job. Lord, I pray that you would work in hearts that need to be worked in this morning. Encourage, convict, love, challenge, whatever we need. Pray for Gavin this morning, the needs that he has in his family. There's, there's so much going on in his life right now. Pray for those that, that we're going to run into this week. And just pray that you give us the boldness and just help us to care and love like you did. Thank you for placing people who loved us and showed kindness to us in our lives. May we be those people in others' lives now. In your son's name we pray. Amen. Amen. Wow. Thanks for coming today. Isn't it a good day? Okay. All right. Was it a good day to you online? I'm I'm hoping a little more. So (laughs) it's been a great day. Let's be dismissed with a song. And so much stronger The King of glory The King above all kings Who shakes the whole earth With holy thunder And leaves us breathless In awe and wonder The King of glory The King above all kings Sing it this morning This is amazing grace This is unfailing love That you would take my place That you would bear my cross You would lay down your life That I would be set free I sing for all that you've done for me Who brings our chaos back into order Who makes the orphan a son and daughter The king of glory, the king of glory Who rules the nation with truth and justice shines like the sun in all of its brilliance the king of glory the king above all kings this is amazing grace this is unfailing love that you would take my place that you would bear my cross you've done for me Worthy is the Lamb who was slain Worthy is the King who conquered the grave Worthy is the Lamb who was slain 
Worthy is the King who conquered the grave. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain. Worthy, worthy, worthy. Yeah, this is amazing grace. This is unfailing love that you would take my place. You would bear my cross. You lay down your life that I would be set free. Oh, Jesus has seen for all that you've done for me. Let's be kind this week. Amen. Amen. Thank you.